stories that matter. The journey of life from birth to death is an extraordinary trip, sometimes filled with great joy and excitement, but at other times filled with pain, sorrow, and disappointment. Stories That Matter shares both extremes with you. Sometimes our stories will make you feel very happy, but the journey of life is not all happiness. Other times, the journey of life will make you feel sad, for all of us have experienced both extremes. Stories That Matter will begin right after the break with a story that will touch your heart in the journey of life. Welcome to Stories That Matter. My name is Roger Thompson, and my special guest today is Gib Bergen. We're going to talk about stories that matter, which means common, ordinary people who accomplish extraordinary tasks. And this is the perfect description for my friend, Gib Bergen. But before I tell you about Gib, I need to relate a story to you that happened in May of this year. We're filming from the Kansas Auto Racing Museum. In May, I was doing a tour with a group of people and out of the blue came this fella. I've known him for years, but I didn't expect to see him. His name's Gib. He came up to me, and as I finished the tour, he said, Roger, you need to go to Mound Ridge. I said, where is Mound Ridge? Well, he described that to me, and I said, all right, Gib, I'll make a point to go to Mound Ridge. I don't know why I'm going there. Um, so anyway, I decided I would, and it took me about a month later before I headed to Mound Ridge. and did I ever get a surprise? Mound Ridge is on I-35 south of um, McPherson and uh, just about north of Newton, but it's two miles from I-35. I went there and as soon as I pulled off the road and headed the two miles towards town, I looked around and I saw every single house was perfectly maintained. The yards were mowed and trimmed. And I thought, well, these folks must do this all at the same time. They must have a routine where they go out and do that. My instructions were to go to the only light, stoplight in town. I did that and turn left, I mean turn right. So I turned right and to my surprise there was about a 20 acre field filled up with all kinds of museum pieces. I could not believe it. Here was a little small town that I can best describe as Mayberry, USA and it was filled up with the most beautiful museum. So I went into the museum and they were having a meeting. The meeting was just ending. There were men and women and the first thing I noticed about the meeting room was the chairs and tables were placed in a square. They weren't facing a podium and have someone uh, relating information to them. They were in a square and could see each other and relate information. Uh, they immediately got up introduced themselves to me, they introduced themselves as volunteers, uh, labor volunteers for the museum. They didn't tell me their names, very cordial people. And uh, it was at about this time that I ran into Gib and asked Gib what was going on here. And he commenced to tell me the history of Mound Ridge. And I want to turn it over to Gib because this is a most amazing story about common people with extraordinary talent. Gib, take it away. Well, Roger, thank you uh, for having me. Um, it's a great opportunity to come up and uh, visit about Mound Ridge. Mound Ridge is a small t community, about 1,800 people. Um, they are. Um, an ethnic background of uh, some Mennonites that moved over here in 1874. And um, that is basically uh, what a lot of our museum is made up of is uh, from that era uh, of 18, early 1800s and, uh, and forward. but. Uh, our museum complex is made up of uh, six buildings. Uh, we have the Cold House, which is um, the original first house built in Mound Ridge. It was built in 1875. Um, the granddaughter uh, lived in that house up until 18 or 1986, and uh, 
then she left it uh, to the city, and the city has um, um, taken care of it uh, financially as far as uh, keeping the upkeep of it. Uh, the rest, some of the other buildings, um, we have uh, inside our, of our museum, uh, we have a conference room um, uh, that is where we have our meeting, and that's where Roger came into. Um, as you walk into that museum, the first one of the first things you'll see is a uh, clock. Uh, that clock was made by the uh, first owner of the first lumber yard in Mound Ridge, and that is all handmade. Um, it was built in uh, 1879, I believe the date was. But give you your museum goes back to all kinds of pieces and equipment and fixtures from way back into the 1800s. Yes. When we come back, I want to discuss some of these with you. Okay. Thanks. Very good. Welcome back to Stories That Matter. I'm your host, Roger Thompson, with special guest, Gib Bergen. Gib, I took a bunch of pictures when I arrived at that museum, and I'm not sure I knew what I was looking at, except these were well-preserved, incredible pictures and, in, and items that are in that museum. We've talked about the meeting room, which I found very impressive, the handmade clock, uh, the next picture I recall is the military room. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Um, we have um, assortment of all the um, military, um, like the Navy, the, the Army, the Marines, um, Air Force. Uh, were these all uniforms worn by people from Mound Ridge? These were all from local people from Mound Ridge. Uh, and they've all been uh, donated to us there. Um, I see the next picture says blacksmith shop. Yes, that is, that's one of the pieces that we're really proud of. Um, that is a working blacksmith. We have a local uh, gentleman there that is our blacksmith, and he um, does a lot of, uh, of our um, stuff that we make in our, our, our gift shop. Uh, he makes roses. Uh, he makes little toys that you can uh, play with. Um, very interesting. He, mm -hmm. he and his uh, grandson started that as an Eagle Scout program. Now, is it correct that everything that happens in this museum and to the buildings, everything not only inside but outside, is all performed by volunteer labor and has been for yes. decades? Is that, that correct? Has, that, all started in like 1986 uh, when the volunteers all started. All of these buildings uh, and everything in them has been given to us and the volunteers have done all the work um, as far as arranging everything and, and putting the displays up. Um, just like um, that, uh, on this next picture that we're talking about, it shows the front of the Heritage Museum, and um, you can see a piece of our old uh, machinery that we have there. It's a cultivator, and um, the the dinner bell you see there um, is one of the most important things we have there because that tells us it's break time and we can sit down. You must have rang that bell before I arrived. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> What's the next picture that you have there? The, the next picture is the picture of the coal house itself. Um, that house was, like I told you earlier, was uh, built in uh, 1875. It was been added on to about three times. Um, so um, <clears throat> it has been quite extensively uh, remodeled. 
uh, over time. Uh, the picket fence was uh, part of the original uh, uh, place. Now, if I tour the museum again, can I go to all of these places? Yes, in the all of these places are available. Um, when you come on the, to the complex, um, and you can pick and choose. Uh, you can spend all day in the Heritage Museum if you like, or you can spend an hour in a blacksmith shop. Um, so there's there's any. We also have the depot, which is our uh, railroad museum. So okay. um, now the next picture I was very impressed with uh, for several reasons, but once again I was not invited to join in the activities there. Tell me what's that picture represent? Well, the, the next picture is a picture of our uh, soda fountain uh, that we used to have uptown. It was on Main Street. Um, uh, after probably, well, I don't know, I'm guessing a little, probably 50, 75 years, um, it has closed and uh, but the owner let us have the uh, soda fountain that we could preserve it and has donated it to the museum. It looks brand new, folks. It's amazing. Next picture. This is why I can never get a hold of you when I call Mound Ridge because <laughs> that, the telephone booth seems to be in the museum. Yeah, and that is the only phone booth that Mound Ridge ever had. It was up on Main Street. Uh, it was actually made by a combine cab uh, manufacturer. Uh, it weighs a ton. It's it's all metal and um, that is uh, one of the newer displays that we've had right now. The uh, next picture, I was told that if I came down there during the winter I could push people around in that. Is it a sled? Yes. And it's it's driven by, it's pushed and powered by Roger pushing people? Is that the yeah, way it works? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, you might be in for a treat yeah, or you a could, disappointment. You know, uh, we, we figured we could raise a little money because people would like to see that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, our next picture um, is a uh, display of some of the original early uh, beauty uh, equipment, uh, hairdressing. You never uh, spent much time there. No, I did not. And I would have been scared to. Uh, <laughs> If you ever see these things, that it, uh, it looks like some, uh, it might be more of an execution chamber than uh, execution hair chamber. All right. What's our next picture? The next picture is our um, uh, antique um, fire uh, truck. Uh, it's one of the two wheels where the um, you have either manpower or. Uh, uh, horse-drawn power to uh, move it around the area. Um, the hose is wrapped the around hose the axle. The hose is wrapped the around, right, and uh, you um, pull it up to the fire and hook it up to the hydrant and and uh, go from there. Um, the next picture we have is the um, Ag Museum. In that Ag Museum, we have uh, our antique tractors. We have some of the old um, some of the older people might remember some of the John Deere wagons that we have. Uh, we have uh, planters uh, that will plant four foot squares uh, in our fields. Uh, our next one is a... Uh, Let's come back and surprise everyone with the okay. next picture because the next two pictures are very good. Welcome back to Stories That Matter. Roger and Gibb trying to figure out what's going on in this beautiful museum in Mound Ridge. Gibb, what's the next picture that you have there? Well, the picture we're looking at the, uh, is a, a picture of um, an old truck uh, and with a crane on it. Uh, it's uh, one of the local businesses have had that in town for years. Uh, everybody remembers it. Um, it unloaded uh, lime uh, off of railroad cars for uh, to be spread out on the farm. Uh, it was uh, on the on the crane itself. It had an extension at one time, and it helped put up the um, the old um, Greer Auditorium, which is uh, 
one of the original uh, parts of the high school. Uh, so it's got a lot of local history as far as being being used around the area for construction. I see. And so the next picture? The next picture um, is the one, of the, well, the only original building uh, other than the house left on the property. Uh, what it, it was, it, the last use of it was uh, for a cattle barn, uh, but originally it was a granary where you could drive the wagon on either side. The grain bins were in the middle and then you could drive alongside and scoop the wheat in or, or whatever grain you were using. Great. So. All right, our story is about people, Gib. And in this case, I want to mention the people that I met when I went to Mound Ridge. And unbeknownst to you, I made one trip when I visited with everyone here, and I made another trip later on, and I did some history about Mound Ridge and the people there. One thing I noticed was these are the most outgoing, hardworking people I've ever met. And once I looked into their backgrounds, I figured out that there was one fellow from the Mound Ridge area, and his name was Melbourne. Melbourne was a significant fellow because in 1955, CBS wanted to do a television show, and they wanted Milburn to be one of their lead actors in the show. Milburn agreed to do the show. There was a young man who had been a war hero. They wanted him to play the the uh, big role, and uh, he would have the lead role. There would be other people involved. On the first day of of the uh, filming, Milburn said something to Jim, who was the lead actor, and he said, Jim, look around and tell me what you see. Milburn was from the Mound Ridge area, and Jim said, I see a lot of people. And Milburn said to him, the 300 people that you see have families, and they are relying on us for their livelihood. That's our obligation. And we need to do the best we can. And uh, Jim took that to heart. So it would be no time that the show became very popular. And one of the first things that Jim did as a lead actor was made sure that the cast and members all got regular increases in pay. And uh, in addition to that, the filming was done on a 3,000 acre ranch and Jim bought that ranch because that was more security in his mind that this show was going to continue. Thirdly, he did something that no one else has ever done and that is he went to the CBS executives and he said, I want all of my entertainers to receive residuals. Residuals were totally unheard of. If you were an actor back in those days and you did a movie for somebody, those rights to that movie went to the studio. What Jim Arness said was these rights for these individual actors will go into their pocket. And in the event they pass away, it will go into their heirs' pockets. It's the first time in the history of motion picture business or the studio business that residuals were paid to those actors. Um, that's who Jim was. The, um, the show became a huge success, and um, you'll know it as Gunsmoke. It went on for some 65 years. It's still going. The, um, the original actors and cast members are all deceased now, and the residuals are still being paid. The Milburn from the Mound Ridge area was 20 years older than everyone else. He would be the first one to pass away in 1980 of a heart condition. But Milburn, You'll know Milburn as Milburn Stone from the Mound Ridge area. He played Doc Adams on Gunsmoke. And what an inc incredible character he was because everybody knows who he was. He spent a lot of time in central Kansas with his friend, Ken Curtis, also known as Festus. And when they weren't doing the shows, 
he and Festus would be at the various farm ponds and lakes in Kansas. They just loved it. One of their favorite hideouts, hangouts, could be hideouts, one of their favorite hangouts was the Brookville Hotel, oh, yeah. which was located in Brookville. And they were regulars there. And uh, they loved the chicken, they loved to meet the people. And uh, when you see these guys back in those days, there was always a camaraderie among them that you could see, even though they were on set and acting. Um, so that was part of the people that Mound Ridge was. Another person from Mound Ridge that I met in 67 was named Diane. She went to a military function with me. I tried to tell her we were going to a mess hall out at the Army base at Hutchison, and Diane told me something I never forgot. She said, Roger, it's not the place, it's the people there. And there was 200 people there, and within an hour, Diane had met all of them. And she had us at the head table with the commanding general. When we went back to college that fall, I saw in the newspaper that Diane had been voted by her 15,000 peers who attended K-State as Miss K-State 1968. I was not surprised to see that two months later, she was Miss Congeniality of the Miss America contest. And she was a perfect example of the people that you meet at um, Mound Ridge and the Mound Ridge area. Thank you folks for watching the show. We will visit with you on another day. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Roger Thompson again with my friend Gib Bergen. I want to talk to you about one of the major actors, or the major actor in the Gunsmoke show, and that was James Arness, played Matt Dillon. He was a World War II veteran. At the age of 21, he was in, in one of the landing crafts that landed at Anzio, Italy. The gate would drop out the back, they were in deep water, and they were expected, all of these soldiers and young men, were expected to tread through this tall water, go through a sandbar with no cover or protection, and meet the enemy who was firing at them with 40 caliber machine guns. James Arness was immediately hit by fire when the tailgate dropped, would be in the hospital for a year and a half, and he can only be described as a war hero. If you watch some of the later movies of Gunsmoke and the other shows he did, he had a noticeable limp. He paid the price of being a combat veteran, and I will always remember that about him. And uh, somehow he found out that that was my opinion of him. He sent me a nice gift in 09, about three years before his death, and I'll never forget him. Thank you. We'll see you next time.